So let me set the scene. We're on board NASA's Dark Probe as it does 14,000 miles an hour through a vacuum on a kamikaze mission hurtling towards an asteroid. We join the action when they're 668 miles away from impact, like I say, doing 14,000 miles an hour. We're going to look at a short clip, and again, I'm going to highlight the obvious problems. And I'll start with, at a distance, the asteroid, or asteroids, look like computer graphics. When the so-called probe gets really close to the asteroid, we get a couple of very clever little cuts, and then the asteroid, which is CGI, then has rocks superimposed onto the face of it. Absolutely ridiculous. This is supposedly about science, about Earth's defense against asteroids. But as we're about to see, this is nothing more than a charade. So let's join the action. Two, what was it, 668 miles out, doing 14,000 miles an hour. The team is standing, just recognizing this moment years in the making. It is really nice to see them relax a little bit, get off from those computers that they've been glued to and just appreciate this moment that's coming. Yeah, and they've earned this. Um, it's just great to see them there. Absolutely ridiculous. And as you can see, the asteroids on our screen look nothing more than old school computer graphics. Why? Because exactly that's exactly what they are. Now we're going to forward the action a little bit here. To near impact. We'll come to about here. Oh my goodness, look at that. Looks like control system settling down, angular rates look really good. I think we're going to get the investigation team some good pictures. Wow. No, no, come on, we can do better than that. <laughs> You're right, you can do better than that. This is terrible. This is supposed to be about science, where you're traveling at 14,000 miles an hour in a probe, or you, this camera's on a probe that's doing 14,000 miles an hour, that's going to smash, supposedly, into an asteroid, all in the name of science, to see if it can displace or dislodge or have any effect upon this asteroid as part of so-called Globe Earth's defense for future against asteroids. But the silly thing is here, if this was really about science, you would, have just, you would have used two probes. One, the kamikaze one, and another to film this from the side profile where you see all the action taking place and you don't lose your data because your probe's so-called smashed into an asteroid. And of course, if there was any movement in the asteroid, because of the probe, it would be filmed side on and captured in a scientific manner by the other probe. But as we're about to see, we don't get any of that, which in itself highlights the absurdity of this, because this is going to supposedly smash into the asteroid at 14,000 miles an hour. You're not going to get any data regarding whether or not this asteroid moved. Not that this is real anyway, but I'm just taking it, just believing them for a second and still highlighting the absurdity. There's a delay in communications as well. So by the time this thing smashed into the asteroid, with the delay, you're not going to get any data back. You're certainly, because the craft is smashed to pieces, not going to know or have any ideas about if this made any difference to the asteroid, moved it in any shape or form whatsoever. Which again, highlights the absurdity of this. And like I've said previously, these NASA engineers, these people who work at NASA, are grown adults whose minds never, ever, ever return from Disney World. Look. Starting to see those individual boulders there. You can see All shadows right. of the various rocks on the surface. Impact. It's amazing, guys. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, it is unbelievable. Absolute tosh. Computer graphics for a while. Then it changes to a computer graphic with a, like an image of rocks superimposed onto the top of it. Disguised cleverly in a little jolty cut, as we're about to see. Looks to me like we're headed straight in. Fourteen thousand miles an hour. Oh wow! Yeah. 
Oh my goodness. Imagine how good this would have looked from a side profile, seeing this, capturing all this in all its glory, rather than the tosh we're about to see. Yeah. Seven, oh, six, wow. five, four, three, two, one. And there's your rocks superimposed onto the CGI asteroid. And that gets these naive individuals, these NASA test engineers, these supposedly intelligent individuals, who, like I said, left their minds and brains at Disneyland when they were kids, because there's no discernment, just gullibility and the minds of fantasists that rely on data to fulfill their fantasies. Ridiculous. Gosh. <gasps> Oh, wow. Awaiting visual confirmation. All right. We got it. No offense, lads. I could do better myself on a free app on my phone. Yeah? Like I say, if this was real, you would have filmed this for another probe from the side on, which would have been much more scientific, far superior to this footage, and of course meant you would have actually got some data. Because there's no way with a delay if this was real, that you'd get any data back about what difference this probe meant hitting this asteroid anyway, even if this was real. None. Waiting. Waiting. Got it? Waiting. Waiting. And we have Every impact. <laughs> and that's the confirmation of impact. Billions of dollars. And this is the confirmation of impact. This is what drives people wild in the control room of NASA. And this is how easy it is to fool gullible individuals. Like I said, if this was real, you would have had two probes, one film from the side of this, which would have been the scientific one, while this one would have been the kamikaze one. They didn't do that because it's not about science. It's a charade to fool naive individuals in the NASA control room, and even more, gullible, naive individuals that actually watch and believe this tosh. Dear, oh dear.